So you've heard of both electrical gradients and chemical gradients. We need to talk about how they combine as one factor in situations where we're talking about ions, which is what we're talking about when we talk about excitable cells. So neurons primarily, but also muscle cells. So I'm gonna draw both of these separately in a moment. First, let's just have a reminder here of our typical cell um, and it's negative inside compared to outside. And that is because of the presence of sodium and potassium. Um, so high sodium outside and low sodium inside. And let's actually just do that one. So sodium is a charged ion. In this scenario of the cell, just looking at sodium, there is a concentration gradient in. So remember, a concentration gradient is when there's more of something on one side of the membrane compared to the other side. Could be either inside or outside. For sodium in our cells, it is more outside. In that case, that creates a drive in. So the gradient is this way, is into the cell. That is a chemical drive or gradient. And the concentration piece of that is when there's more of something, anything on one side versus the other. The electrical component is when there is a difference in charge. So that is here. If we have more negative inside the cell, which we do in reality, and more positive outside the cell, There's a drive for positive to move in. That is the electrical drive. So that in this scenario, same, it's in. It could potentially be out if we're talking about um, movement of a negative ion, for example. So actually this is the electrical drive for a positive ion, anything positive. But if we're talking about the movement of a negative thing, so chloride, for example, um, just talking about electrical, a negative ion is going to have a drive out. So this is the electrical drive for a positive ion. So in our resting cell, in any cell, we are talking about ions, the presence of ions inside and outside, the movement of ions in different times of the action potential, which we'll get to, we need to talk about not the electrical gradient, not the chemical gradient, but the electrochemical gradient, which is going to consider each of these components. Sometimes those this is easy to determine because the electrical and the chemical gradient are in the same direction. So for sodium, in this case, the electrical chemical gradient is simple to determine. It is the same direction for both. There are other times when the electrical and the chemical gradients act in opposition. Um, and there are formulas you can use to calculate the specifics of driving forces in for different ions and different scenarios is called the Nernst equation. We will not be doing that. I will be telling you um, for potassium is the one we'll look at where that, what the factors that contribute to that gradient and where those are equal and opposite gradients and when they're not. 